Hello and welcome to the Betting Pros PGA Podcast. I'm Pat Fitzmorris, joined as always by Bo McBrayer, my tag team partner. Next up on the PGA Tour schedule, the CJ Cup, Byron Nelson, which will be played at TPC Craig Ranch in McKinney, Texas, just north of Dallas. Bo and I are going to preview the Byron Nelson from a betting perspective. We'll also do a very, very quick recap of the Zurich Classic of New Orleans. The Betting Pros PGA Podcast is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the place to go for best ball fantasy football contests. But you might not have known that Underdog has golf contests too. Sign up for Underdog if you haven't already with the promo code BPGOLF to get your first deposit matched up to $100. Plus, there's a special pick available for you in the lobby. More on Underdog and its golf contests a little later. The Zurich Classic of New Orleans is in the books. This is the unusual two-man event where two of the rounds are best ball, two of the rounds are alternate shot. It was an Irish triumph at this year's Zurich Classic with the Shout team of Rory. Shout out to us Irishmen here. That's right. Rory McIlroy and Shane Lowry beating Chad Ramey and Martin Trainer in the first hole of a sudden death playoff to win the events. Rory and Lowry finished 25 under par, and they were really the only big-name team to seriously contend. Uh, the runners-up, Ramey and Trainer, not exactly household names. Ryan Brem and Mark Hubbard were one shot back at minus 24, and there were four teams two shots back. Garrick Higo and Ryan Fox, Sam Stevens and Paul Barjon, Zach Blair and Patrick Fishburne, and Nico Echevarria and Max Grazerman. I will freely admit, Bo, that I did not watch a minute of the Zurich oh, Classic. You missed out. Uh, I was pretty preoccupied with the NFL draft and, yeah. and had to do a lot of writing before, during, and after. Uh, plus, the Zurich Classic is not exactly one of the four star events of the PGA Tour calendar. Do you have any? takeaways from the Zurich Classic or should we just move on to the Byron Nelson? Ain't other than it was the exact crapshoot we expected it to be. I mean, we got a little bit of chalk winning the thing, but uh, other than a couple long shot picks that cracked placement bets for me, it was just kind of a low risk type of oh cool, the PGA Tour is having a thing this week. Um, I was actually more locked into the the Corn Ferry Tour this this last week. So, um, we're getting ready to call some bomb long shots in the next few weeks. Uh, so stay tuned for all of those because Ooh. I'm I've been scouting. A scouting mission. I like it. In the spirit of the NFL draft. He's mm-hmm. checking out the corn ferry tour. Yeah, beating the bushes just, for not just about football. We can always scout who's on the horizon <laughs> on the PGA tour. <sighs> Well, we will get to the Byron Nelson in just a moment. But first, our friends at Underdog Fantasy are letting you make picks on your favorite golfers all season long. Just pick higher or lower on selected stats for two to five golfers, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single day. You can also make rivals picks, choosing, for instance, which of two golfers will shoot a better score in a round. Golf picks can be combined with player stats from other sports, too. Go sign up at Underdog Fantasy with the promo code BPGOLF to get your first deposit matched up to $100. Plus, there's a special pick available for you in the lobby. The host course for the Byron Nelson is TPC Craig Ranch. It is a par four measuring 7,414 yards. The course is a little on the longer side, but the fairways are wide. The rough is forgiving, so players can hit driver pretty much with impunity here on most of the par fours and par fives. Uh, The three par fives all measure less than 570 yards, so all very reachable. This is a good course for the Bombers. The greens at TPC Craig Ranch are bent grass, and they are big. The metrics suggest that these greens are slightly easier than average to putt on, and recent winners had good weeks with the flat sticks uh jason day is the defending champ he was minus 23 last year one stroke better than siwoo kim and austin eckrout it was an emotional win for day it was his first win since the passing of his mom uh kh lee got back-to-back wins at the byron nelson in 21 uh 2021 and 2022 with scores of minus 25 and minus 26 do you notice a theme with these winning scores Bo? Really low. low. This is a birdie fest. Mm-hmm. And um, those two wins, by the way, the only tour wins for KH Lee. So obviously this course suits his eye. Uh, the forecast says there's thunderstorm chances all four days of the tournament. So possible 
this could wind up being a range shortened affair um, and which means the course could play a little longer than usual and the greens could be even more receptive than usual nothing real noteworthy as far as wind even though it is a texas course Bo, any thoughts on tpc craig ranch and what kind of players might have an edge here uh, it's among the three easiest courses on the entire PGA Tour rotation, so uh, get ready for lots and lots of birdies, and that's what I'm looking for. When I'm modeling, I'm I'm mainly looking at scoring opportunities gained and then how well they convert those opportunities. So if you're if you're just looking for it's it's a glorified putting contest. We get a couple of these every year where it's the off the tee. There's no penalties for being wayward off the tee. So your bombers that are come out of the woodworks that just yank it down their 350 yards, they're going to have shorter approach distances. Hopefully that means they're closer on approach. But mainly whoever makes the most birdie putts is going to win this thing. Jason Day was fortunate last year. And then K.H. Lee, the Panda, with his wins in 21 and 22, he's a bomber. He's he just poking it out there, put the put the ball in the green somewhere, and then hopefully the ball goes in. Because if the ball doesn't go in, you have no chance here. Uh, the, the 25, 26 under par is pretty, pretty regular here. And I think this year, if we see softer conditions from passing thunderstorms, which I think is more of the case being Texas late spring, you're going to get some passing thunderstorms in the late afternoon so maybe if it's a little softer we could see closer to 30 under par that's how easy this wow. golf course is by tour standards so uh yeah we're gonna have some favorites that we want to line up but we're also gonna have plenty of long shots because this type of tournament really brings out the 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 darker dusty cobwebs of the pga tour because some of these guys are seeing this as a real opportunity to enhance their status for the next coming seasons keeping their card all of that is at play here, so buckle up. Yeah, let's get to those odds in just a minute. But first, if you want a chance to win a free one-year premium Betting Pros subscription, you need to subscribe to the Betting Pros YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video, and that's it. We'll be announcing a winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. Let's get to the odds. They are all courtesy of DraftKings as of Monday afternoon. No Scotty Scheffler this week, so Jordan Spieth is the favorite at minus 1,400. Uh, he's a Dallas native, Spieth is, so this mm-hmm. tournament is always sort of a homecoming weekend for him. Jason Day and Siwoo Kim are minus 1,800. Will Zalatoris minus 2,200. Sung J.M., Alex Noren, and Adam Scott minus 2,500. Min Woo Lee minus 2,800. Tom Kim, Tom Hoagie, and Steven Yeager and Ben On are all pl- – uh, Excuse me. Sorry. I was saying minus. Uh, Plus 3,000. Keith Mitchell plus 3,500. And Thomas Dietrich plus 4,000. How do you feel about the favorites, Bo? Uh, pretty strongly. These these are all guys that have shown up here before. Jordan Spieth, of course, is a native to the area. He's no stranger to places that don't penalize bet- wayward tee shots. It seems like if Jordan Spieth doesn't have any uh, consequences to spraying drivers all over the course, then he can really win here. 16-1 to 1 for a favor. It's the best we've seen all season. Uh, that's that's going to be excellent odds for him. Siwoo Kim always shows up here. He's a birdie-making machine. Uh Another one that I'm interested in, but may, maybe more appropriate at 16 to 1 than Spieth. I think Spieth could be shorter, probably will be shorter as we get closer to lock. So Jordan Spieth right now at 16 to 1 is the preferred pick. And then I'm going down just a little ways to, let's see, I got Steven Yeager. Yeager bombs at 30 to 1. That guy is the perfect fit for this golf course he hits the ball a mile off the tee he's a birdie machine he's a par five assassin steven yeager is playing great golf this year and 30 to 1 is an insult to what he's put together this season so far yeah yeager finished 11th in this tournament last year and uh oh by the way he's already won in texas this year he won the houston open um the only thing i'm a little worried bo about spieth and his recent form he yeah he's played well here he was second in 2022 ninth in 2023 this course does suit him for sure but in his last seven starts one top 10 three missed cuts and a dq Perfect. Um, that's why the odds are so soft for us 
<laughs> that is true. They are they are softer than you would think, considering mm-hmm. we have no Scheffler, no Shoffley, no Cantlay. Yeah, the, um, with the way I'm weighting my metrics, he's third in this field, and birdies are better gained, and second in strokes gained on par fives. Uh, as far as what I'm measuring, uh, he's checking all the boxes for me. Maybe other than being just kind of middle of the pack and driving distance and middle of the pack putting, he's got everything else down top five in this field. Now, Bo, you said you were scouting the Corn Ferry Tour. Were you scouting the Korean Tour this past week? Because Sung <laughs> Jae-im is coming in hot, having won the Worry Financial Group Championship yeah. in Korea. And that came right after his 12th place finish at the RBC Heritage. Yeah. So uh, Sung Jae mm-hmm. is on kind of a heater right now. He is, and I, I just worry about his approach. His approach game has been really off this year. Uh, that's the reason why he's not quite scoring as well as we've seen him. If he can pull it together and get closer to the pin here, he can make some noise. He's still top 10 in my model, so nothing to shake a stick at. He's actually a very short hitter by tour standards, but he's so accurate. So if his approach game is on point, uh, we could definitely see Sung Jam. He's extremely talented. Can I talk you into... Minwoo Lee. I mean, it's kind of a bomber's paradise, and it seems like Minwoo is the kind of guy who's going to play well on this sort of a setup. I thought he would rate out better than he did. I think what we're running into is it's not just a bomb and gouge course. It's very much a second shot course, and where he has struggled the most is on approach. His his approach game is abysmal this year, and that's going to be very important. So unless he uh, unless he finds something as to get closer to the pin and give himself more birdie opportunities, I just don't see it at his odds this week. Obviously, he's a big name. He hits the hell out of the ball at twenty eight to one. I guess it's appropriate, but he's just not on my radar that's fair i mean i know a higher percentage of approach shots on this course are from 150 yards or further out or uh you know yeah, some he's quite uh, a few 149th in this field in strokes again on approach and 115th in birdie or better gained uh not great so number six in driving distance doesn't really doesn't really help out when everything else is above or outside of the top 60. what about ben on you finished 14th mm. here last year, and maybe it won't. Uh, I don't know. You look at some of the guys who won here. They had good putting weeks, mm-hmm. but they weren't necessarily guys known as, as lights-out putters. And he's definitely not a lights-out putter. He's a dreadful putter. Uh, he's also been kind of lackluster on approach this season, but he seems to make up for it. He's another bomber, third in this field in driving distance. He's great on longer approach shots. It just hasn't been there on on that second shot. So, yeah, he's he's in the pool for sure. I just don't know if I want to bet him, especially when he's getting premium odds here at 28 to one. I think I'd rather see him around 35 to 40. If he slips there, then sure. Fair. All right. Let's look at some of the mid range options. We've got Mackenzie Hughes and Adam Shank at plus forty five hundred. Patrick Rogers, Maverick McNeely, and K.H. Lee at plus 5,000. Seamus Power, Bo Hostler, and Aaron Rye at plus 5,500. Mark Hubbard and Davis Thompson at plus 6,000. Luke List and uh, Doug Gim at plus 7,000. And Ryan Fox, Kevin Yu, and Ben Griffin at plus 7,500. Do any of the mid-range guys appeal to you? This is the range where I'm having to restrain myself because there's so many guys I really like. I think I narrowed it down to two guys that I really want to bet on this week. Adam Shank at 40 to one, number one, very, very top of my model. So that, that got my attention when I, when I kept rearranging it for different numbers of rounds, going back farther, going back shorter, changing the weights on the stats that I'm looking at. He's still number one, no matter how I shake it, I couldn't shake Adam Shank from the top of my rankings. So he's getting a bet at 40 to one. Let's go, Adam Shank. I'm I'm really hoping that you're not just a stat darling like some of the other guys in this field. Uh, but and then the other one is Doug Gim. Doug Gim is a scoring machine. He looked great last week and in, in the team event. Uh, this guy can make birdies and bunches, and this course demands it. This course demands converting on birdie opportunities and playing aggressively. Doug Gim is aggressive to a fault. He's the most volatile player we have on the PGA Tour, and I just think that there's not as much penalty for how aggressive he plays. This guy goes after every pin every time, no matter what, and sometimes it blows up in his face. There's just not a lot of blow-up places on this golf course, so I think Doug Gim has the firepower. 70-1, to I've done dumber things with 10 bucks 
No interest in two-time Byron Nelson champ K.H. Lee at 50-1. to I mean, he has not been in bad form since the start of March. He's at a fourth-place finish at the Cognizant mm-hmm. Classic, a ninth at the Valspar Championship, and 11th two weeks ago at RBC Heritage. I like K.H. Lee. I just don't love him. I, I don't love the way he sh- showed up last year and got 11th, I think. So I it just he's not the same player he was three years ago or two years ago. So I'm going to skip him at 50 to 1, just not because I don't like him, but because there's other options in that same range I'd rather go for. Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm always a big, big fan of K.H. Lee. The Panda is uh, live. Yeah. Other guys who come in with some momentum, Mackenzie Hughes has a third place finish and a 14th place finish over his last three events. Also finished 14th here a year ago. Davis Thompson has three top 25s in his last four events. Um, any long shots you want to recommend, Bo? I mean, we were talking about this off stage. We've got we've got some of our old buddies here. We've got Jake Knapp. We've got mm-hmm. Alejandro Tosti. We've got Rio Hisatsuni. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Knapp is... is 90. 90 to 1. Mm-hmm. An absolute bomber. One on a bomber's course earlier in the year at the Mexico Open. It's a, it's Open. a comp course, too. Mexico is a comp course for here. Is it? Um, I Let me throw out Matty Schmidt at 100 to 1. Big hitter. Deutschland. And after opening the season with six straight cuts, he's finished 26th or better in five of his last seven. Yeah, uh, I'll see your uh, I'll see your Matty Schmidt, and I'll raise you a guy who's blazing hot putting right now, along with being the longest hitter in this field. Period. Peter Quest, uh, both he and Jake Knapper at ninety to one. I think I'll double up on a, a half unit bet on both Jake Knapp and Peter Quest because they have the distance, but they're also strong in other areas. I I think Matty Schmidt gets a lot of credit because he's a long hitter, but the rest of his game still isn't quite there yet. We've seen other things work for Quest and nap in this this season uh more recently with quest just being uh, on fire with the putter monday qualifying and then turning it into a, a top five finish a couple weeks ago and then uh my deep deep shot 200 to 1 dylan Wu is we have we haven't seen dylan Wu's best form this season but this is the kind of place where he shows up where he's the middle of the pack in driving distance but this guy puts the lights out. This guy has great on approach. This guy's great at converting birdie opportunities. Uh, Dylan Wu is uh, mispriced at 200 to 1. Yeah, you've been uh, sort of adamant about him. And so I am kind of expecting a breakthrough since you've been pretty key on these long shots this year, Bo. Um, any interest in Hisatsuni? I mean, we've talked about him being maybe a star in the making. Hits it a long, long yeah. way. I really am a big fan of him and and he's kind of like Kevin Yu for me where his ball striking is so good that you can't ignore it but what we haven't seen Hisatsuni or Yu is uh is the short game to back it up where you actually score even though he, he, these guys are hitting at a mile they're hitting it close and then they just don't convert I want to see that from those guys uh it's it's very possible I would I wouldn't fault anybody for playing Rio this week cuz he's got so much talent and he's fun to watch if you if you if you're wanting to key in on a couple un- relatively unknown players Rio Hisatsune and uh and Kevin Yu Kevin Yu is the the most fun shot tracer guy you're ever going to see. This dude absolutely pulverizes the ball, especially on approach. That's where he popped up for me. He just can't putt. And that's uh, Hisatsune, uh, kind of a weak, weak short game so far. But he gets hot. And when Rio gets hot, he makes a ton of birdies. Kevin Yu just needs to hit the ball super duper close because the dude's putting is so abysmal. Yeah, so... Um... What does your betting card look like as a now ball? So so far I have Jordan Spieth at sixteen to one, Stephen Yeager thirty to one, Adam Shank forty to one, Doug Gim seventy. I have both Jake Knapp and Peter Quest at ninety, and Dylan Wu at two hundred. I have Min Wu Lee at plus twenty eight hundred. Um, I I know you make a really good point about the approach game, but I I'm just having a feeling about Min Wu this week. Uh, Yeager. At plus three thousand, KH Lee. I got to go back to him at fifty to one to win. Uh, and then I'm also throwing down on uh, Jake Knapp at ninety to one, Maddie Schmidt at a hundred to one, and Rio Hisatsuni at uh, one hundred and ten to one. So, and uh, I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to throw a buck or two down on Peter Quest too. Let's go. So, He's... and maybe and maybe Dylan Wu. Yeah. You're, you're, 
talking me into him in, into him yeah i met right. peter quest he's an outstanding human I, w- I would always advocate for betting on him even if a little if it's a little bit now before we get to our one and done picks if you are playing in a one and done golf pool or if you're playing in any sort of tiers based majors pool this year our friends at pool genius have a new product that gives you an edge using objective data like betting odds course performance and national pick trends the tool highlights the top value picks that give you an edge and it can be all customized specifically for your pool If you're doing a one-and-done pool or majors pool, let Pool Genius be your secret weapon. And by the way, Pool Genius isn't just for golf pools. You can use it for March Madness pools, NFL Survivor pools, and more. For 10% off on the majors and masters uh, majors tool, and for up to 55% off on yearly packages that include all golf, football, and March Madness tools, Visit PoolGenius.com slash Fantasy Pros. Again, that's PoolGenius.com slash Fantasy Pros. Now for the one and done picks. Uh, last week at the Zurich Classic, Bo, you told me you wanted to go with Rory McIlroy and Shane Lowry, but you had already burned Lowry. So uh, you went with Sahith Tagala and Will Zalatoris instead. They missed the cut. No soup for you. Uh, I had Adam Hadwin and Davis Riley. They finished in 10th place. Good for $122,375. I continue to claw my way back, but I'm still about $1.9 million behind you, Bo. I'm up first this week. I'm all in on Min Woo. All right. Bo, uh, against uh, against my better judgment, I, I just feel like the, the bombs away motif is going to work to his advantage. He's got the talent. We just need to see it come all the way together. Um, And I will mention it since I think it's pretty remarkable, but I started the season with 16 straight one and done picks making the cut until last week. Of course, it's the team event with the two guys. I really didn't have a choice, but to to take with their firepower there. And of course they didn't make any birdies on the second day on alternate shot. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take my L there in the zero for the first time this season out of 17 weeks, one missed cut. It didn't burn me too bad. I'm glad you didn't have Rory and, Lowry, uh, because that would have been a quick catch up. Uh, let me, I'm going to go with Jaeger bombs, uh, Steven Jaeger. I just think he's a great Texas player. He's, he, he's from Germany, but he grew up in Texas. So I think that having Steven Jaeger here is going to be a, it's going to be a good one because he does all the things that Minwoo Lee does, except he's more well-rounded and of course has more experience. So I think that I think going with Jaeger here is a really solid pick where I don't think even if Minwoo does well, I don't think he's going to, you're not going to gain any ground on me this week. What a coup that would be for you, Bo, if Steven Jaeger did the Texas two-step and won the Houston Open and the Byron Nelson. And that's going to do it for this week's show. I'm going to thank our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Sign up for Underdog with the promo code BPGOLF to get your first deposit matched up to $100 plus a special pick available for you in the lobby. And please come join Bo and I again next week when we'll be previewing the Wells Fargo Championship, the last tournament before the PGA Championship. Until then, so long, everyone.